Hey friends, I'm Whitney, your host with Needles Embroidery. Thank you so much for watching today's Needles Chat. Today I'm going to talk to you about the miscellaneous items that you're going to need to start an embroidery business. So the first things, of course, you've already decided on the type of machine, the style, what you're going to do, and now it comes down to actually getting the machine home and realizing, oh, I don't have the stuff I thought I needed for this. So let me just really quick list the items that you will need to budget into your purchase. The first things are hoops. Are you going to use hoops or fast frames? If you have a larger machine, you have the option of getting fast frames. They are an additional cost. So are you going to want to do that? I chose to do the fast frames and I love the fast frames. They're so fast and easy to use and extremely versatile, especially on the hard to hoop items. The second thing you're going to need to think about is stabilizer. You're going to need cutaway, tear away, water soluble stabilizer, sticky back stabilizer. There's so many varieties of stabilizer. So please budget that into your plan when you get your embroidery machine. The other things are thread. I really, when I first started out, I really didn't even think about thread. I just kind of assumed that I would have the right thread because I sewed. Well, you don't actually use the same sewing thread as you would on your embroidery machine. So the thread that I use on my embroidery machine is specific to my embroidery machine or to embroidery machines in general. So this one is specifically Floriani. I have used other brands. Floriani is just what I prefer. So there are quite a few varieties, but sewing thread tends to be more cotton and a lot of the fibers get jumped up and gunked up in the embroidery machine during the embroidery process, especially during the satin stitch. So please consider that. Um, if you're getting like a bulk size embroidery thread, you're looking at upper hand of $300, maybe $400, depending on the brand that you use and the amount of thread that you buy. Um, I chose to do a larger, a larger box of embroidery thread. So it has a wider variety, but you don't have to do that. Um, the other thing are the needles. So I have just recently discovered that smaller needles work just as good as the thicker the standard 14 by um, 1490 needles on the machine. I actually buy them in bulk from MJ Sewing Supply. I actually buy them in bulk from MJ Sewing Supply and they I would recommend the Oregon embroidery needles but you you use the kind that you are used to or that you you like. Um, but the smaller embroidery needles are actually really good for those small designs or the smaller satin stitches or even the smaller embroidery fonts. So that's something to consider. Embroidery needles are expensive. You're going to pay about a dollar a needle unless you get on eBay or you get on Amazon.com and get some embroidery needles by the bulk. That's generally what I do, and I pay about 20 bucks for 100 of them. That's the way to go. Save your money. The next thing that you're going to want to budget for are scissors. And if you look back here, ta-da, my scissor tree. So I have a lot of different scissors, and they all do different things. I have pinking shears. I have embroidery scissors. I have applique scissors. I have little cutting snips, little thread scissors, bigger fabric scissors. I have a lot, but the kind that you're going to need is really specific to the kind of job you're going to be doing. So if you're going to be doing a lot of appliques, you're going to want a special scissor for that. And I recommend the Spoonbill scissors and, and they're like eight inch, eight inch Spoonbill scissors are a great size. And then I also recommend the six inch, uh, double, double curved scissors and those are really nice because they have a fine tip that allows you to get into those tight curves and corners you can check out my tools video and I use I use those scissors in my tools video 
So check that out. And then just regular fabric scissors. If you're going to be getting fabric for the applique, which is coming up, I'm going to be talking to you about that, then you're going to want some scissors that you can just use with fabric. Paper scissors, unfortunately, don't stay very sharp when you use fabric and then go back and forth between fabric and paper. It dulls them. So you want a very special kind of scissor to use with your special fabric. All right, so I mentioned fabric several times. I mentioned applique several times already in this video. And the applique is a really big part of my business because I'm, I gear a lot of my work toward children or like first birthdays, kind of like this stuff back here in the background. That's what I do. So I had to budget in every month a set price for fabric. And sometimes you don't always get the fabric that you want, or maybe they don't have the fabric at the store that you need, so you have to order it. So also budget in shipping costs and extra shipping and handling or what have you, depending on where you are. There's a bunch of fabric out there, so don't get overwhelmed, but something else to really think about when you do start applique and you start getting in or like starting your fabric stash, and I call it a stash, I'm really a fabric hoarder, and I am not ashamed, I could always use more fabric, <laughs> um, use what you have, I never do but use what you have. Um, I have just recently started telling my customers who want diaper bags like this up there right here, um, that they can look at the options that I have on my Facebook business page or they can buy their own. It helps me use the fabric that I already have. The, and another thing is if you plan on doing onesies and first year birthdays and first whatever, a lot of parents want matching hair bows to go with it. If you are one of those people that is versatile in your craft and you're able to do that, then you're also going to want to budget in ribbon, the hair clips, the hair ties, all the glam and the glitz that go with bow making. I have done both and you rack up a bill on the ribbon part. So if that's not something that you're going to offer, don't do it. Let someone else bother with the bows because it is a, it's an expense that I would have rather not gotten into, but because I have a little girl, she's wearing a hair bow that I made. So because I do have her, I don't have to worry so much about the expense of having all this excess ribbon because anytime she needs something, I just make it. But if it's just like one or two items, I make the customer either buy it or send them to someone that you know that can make the hair bow to match your outfit. Um, another thing, if you're going to start a business, you're gonna want business cards. All my business cards come from Vistaprint. They have great deals on everything. I haven't tried anyone else. I've just used Vistaprint from the get-go and I really like their service, their products. And the more you buy, the better deals you get. And then you also get like a 15% off or 20% off thing here and there. So you will want to know what kind of business cards or you will want to budget in if you start an, an embroidery business business cards, especially if you plan on sharing yourself with the world. A great business tool that's free is word of mouth. You provide good um, customer service, you do a great job, people are going to share your business with others. So you are your biggest marketing tool. You don't have to pay to market yourself, you just do a really good job. But if you're like me and actually want to expand and get even bigger and bigger, then the um, business cards are a way to go. You can just drop them off or make small talk with someone, hand them your business card. Um, the last thing you're going to need um, if you are going to be doing the pants or making things to go with your product are patterns. Patterns can be expensive. 
um, embroidery patterns and the applique patterns or sewing patterns themselves can be expensive. Put in your budget a, a limit on patterns. I plan on doing an embroidery um, website list and I know that I'm not going to hit all of them, but I'm going to do like my top 10 or my top something, my top five embroidery websites to go to. And they they do get expensive, but every once in a while, you will get a great deal on some things. I know that a lot of places they'll do 75% off for this or 50% off of this and it's for one night only. Sign up for their newsletters because they will email you when they have really great deals. So I hope that you enjoyed this needles chat. If I miss anything, please leave them in the comment section below. If you are interested in knowing what my favorite websites are for embroidery applique designs and so on and so forth, please leave a comment in the section below telling me what you want to see up there. And if you have a favorite site, please also leave it in the comment section below. Like, share, and enjoy crafting. Enjoy embroidery. Thank you so much for watching today's Needles Chat. I love you guys, and I will catch you all in the next one.